Persepolis, literally meaning City of Persians, was the ceremonial capital of the Achaemenid Empire. Persepolis is situated 60 kilometers northeast of the city of Shiraz in Fars province in Iran. The earliest remains of Persepolis date back to 515 BCE. It exemplifies the Achaemenid style of architecture. UNESCO declared the ruins of Persepolis a World Heritage Site in 1979. Name To the ancient Persians, the city was known as Parza. The English word Persepolis is derived from the Greek Persepolis, compound of Pesis and Polis, meaning Persian city. Due to the belief among late antiquity Persians that the monuments were built by Jamshid, the site has been known as Takti Jamshid since Sasanian times. It is also known as Chehel Minor. Construction Archaeological evidence shows that the earliest remains of Persepolis date back to 515 BC. André Goddard, the French archaeologist who excavated Persepolis in the early 1930s, believed that it was Cyrus the Great who chose the site of Persepolis but that it was Darius I who built the terrace and the great palaces. Darius ordered the construction of the Apadana Palace and the Council Hall, the main imperial treasury and its surroundings. These were completed during the reign of his son, King Xerxes the Great. Further construction of the buildings on the terrace continued until the downfall of the Achaemenid dynasty. Archaeological research. Odorais of Pordenone passed through Persepolis c. 1320 on his way to China. In 1474, Geosophat Barbaro visited the ruins of Persepolis, which he incorrectly thought were of Jewish origin. Antonio de Gouveia from Portugal wrote about cuneiform inscriptions following his visit in 1602. His first written report on Persia, the Dornada, was published in 1606. Throughout the 1800s and early 1900s, a variety of amateur digging occurred at the site, in some cases on a large scale. The first scientific excavations at Persepolis were carried out by Ernst Herzfeld and Eric Schmidt representing the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago. They conducted excavations for eight seasons beginning in 1930 and included other nearby sites. Hertzfeld believed the reasons behind the construction of Persepolis were the need for a majestic atmosphere, a symbol for their empire, and to celebrate special events, especially the Nauru's. For historical reasons, Persepolis was built where the Achaemenid dynasty was founded, although it was not the center of the empire at that time. Persepolitan architecture is noted for its use of wooden columns. Architects resorted to stone only when the largest cedars of Lebanon or teak trees of India did not fulfill the required sizes. Column bases and capitals were made of stone, even on wooden shafts, but the existence of wooden capitals is probable. The buildings at Persepolis include three general groupings, military quarters, a treasury, and the reception halls and occasional houses for the king. Noted structures include the Great Stairway, the Gate of Nations, the Apadana Palace of Darius, the Hall of the Hundred Columns, the Tripilun Hall and Takara Palace of Darius, the Hadish Palace of Xerxes, the Palace of Artaxerxes III, the Imperial Treasury, the Royal Stables, and the Chariot House. Frieze statues depicting Persian and Median noblemen in friendly conversation. Area Architectural Plan of Persepolis Drawing of Persepolis in 1713 by Gerard Jean Baptiste Geographic Location Persepolis is near the small river Pulva, which flows into the river Kerr. The site includes a 125,000 square meter terrace, partly artificially constructed and partly cut out of a mountain, with its east side leaning on Kui Ramat. The other three sides are formed by retaining walls, which vary in height with the slope of the ground. Rising from 5 to 13 meters on the west side was a double stair. From there, it gently slopes to the top. To create the level terrace, depressions were filled with soil and heavy rocks, which were joined together with metal clips. 
Around 519 BC, construction of a broad stairway was begun. The stairway was initially planned to be the main entrance to the terrace 20 meters above the ground. The dual stairway, known as the Perseplatine Stairway, was built symmetrically on the western side of the Great Wall. The 111 steps measured 6.9 meters wide, with treads of 31 centimeters and rises of 10 centimeters. Originally, the steps were believed to have been constructed to allow for nobles and royalty to ascend by horseback. New theories, however, suggest that the shallow rises allowed visiting dignitaries to maintain a regal appearance while ascending. The top of the stairways led to a small yard in the northeastern side of the terrace, opposite the Gate of Nations. Grey limestone was the main building material used in Persepolis. After natural rock had been leveled and the depressions filled in, the terrace was prepared. Major tunnels for sewage were dug underground through the rock. A large elevated water storage tank was carved at the eastern foot of the mountain. Professor Olmsted suggested the cistern was constructed at the same time that construction of the towers began. The uneven plan of the terrace, including the foundation, acted like a castle, whose angled walls enabled its defenders to target any section of the external front. Diodorus writes that Persepolis had three walls with ramparts, which all had towers to provide a protected space for the defense personnel. The first wall was 7 meters tall, the second, 14 meters and the third wall, which covered all four sides, was 27 meters in height. Though no presence of the wall exists in modern times. Panorama of Persepolis a 19th-century reconstruction by Flandern and Pascal Costa. Sunset in Persepolis. Ruins. Ruins of a number of colossal buildings exist on the terrace. All are constructed of dark grey marble. Fifteen of their pillars stand intact. Three more pillars have been re-erected since 1970 AD. Several of the buildings were never finished. F. Stoltzer has shown that some of the masons' rubbish remains. These ruins, for which the name Chehel Minor can be traced back to the 13th century, they are now known as Takti Jamshid. Since the time of Pietro della Vale, it has been beyond dispute that they represent the Persepolis captured and partly destroyed by Alexander the Great. Behind Takti Jamshid are three sepulchres hewn out of the rock in the hillside. The facades, one of which is incomplete, are richly decorated with reliefs. About 13 km nne, on the opposite side of the pulwa, rises a perpendicular wall of rock, in which four similar tombs are cut at a considerable height from the bottom of the valley. The modern Persians call this place Nakshirostam, from the Sassanid reliefs beneath the opening, which they take to be a representation of the mythical hero Rostam. It may be inferred from the sculptures that the occupants of these seven tombs were kings. An inscription on one of the tombs declares it to be that of Darius Histaspish, concerning whom Ctesias relates that his grave was in the face of a rock and could only be reached by the use of ropes. Ctesias mentions further, with regard to a number of Persian kings, Either that their remains were brought to the Persians, or that they died there. Bar relief in Persepolis, a symbol in Zoroastrian for Nauru's eternally fighting bull, and a lion representing the spring. Two Persian soldiers in Persepolis. Detail of a relief of the eastern stairs of the Apadana, depicting Armenians bringing their famous wine to the king. Gate of all nations. The Gate of All Nations, referring to subjects of the Empire, consisted of a grand hall that was a square of approximately 25 meters in length, with four columns and its entrance on the western wall. There were two more doors, one to the south which opened to the Apadana Yard and the other opened onto a long road to the east. Pivoting devices found on the inner corners of all the doors indicate that they were two leaf doors. 
probably made of wood and covered with sheets of ornate metal. A pair of lamases, bulls with the heads of bearded men, stand by the western threshold. Another pair, with wings and a Persian head, stands by the eastern entrance, to reflect the empire's power. Xerxes's name was written in three languages and carved on the entrances, informing everyone that he ordered it to be built. Apadana Palace Darius the Great built the greatest palace at Persepolis on the western side. This palace was called the Apadana. The king of kings use it for official audiences. The work began in 515 BC. His son Xerxes I completed it 30 years later. The palace had a grand hall in the shape of a square, each side 60 meters long with 72 columns. 13 of which still stand on the enormous platform. Each column is 19 meters high with a square torus and plinth. The columns carried the weight of the vast and heavy ceiling. The tops of the columns were made from animal sculptures such as two-headed bulls, lions and eagles. The columns were joined to each other with the help of oak and cedar beams, which were brought from Lebanon. The walls were covered with a layer of mud and stucco to a depth of 5 cm, which was used for bonding, and then covered with the greenish stucco which is found throughout the palaces. At the western, northern and eastern sides of the palace there were three rectangular porticos each of which had 12 columns in two rows of six. At the south of the Grand Hall a series of rooms were built for storage. Two Grand Perceptatine stairways were built, symmetrical to each other and connected to the stone foundations. To protect the roof from erosion, vertical drains were built through the brick walls. In the four corners of Apadana, facing outwards, four towers were built. The walls were tiled and decorated with pictures of lions, bulls, and flowers. Darius ordered his name and the details of his empire to be written in gold and silver on plates, which were placed in covered stone boxes in the foundations under the four corners of the palace. Two perceptiton style symmetrical stairways were built on the northern and eastern sides of Apadana to compensate for a difference in level. Two other stairways stood in the middle of the building. The external front views of the palace were embossed with carvings of the immortals, the king's elite guards. The northern stairway was completed during Darius's reign, but the other stairway was completed much later. The throne hall next to the Apadana, second largest building of the terrace and the final edifices, is the throne hall or the Imperial Army's Hall of Honor. This 70 by 70 square meter hall was started by Xerxes and completed by his son Artaxerxes I by the end of the 5th century BC. Its eight stone doorways are decorated on the south and north with reliefs of throne scenes and on the east and west with scenes depicting the king. In combat with monsters, two colossal stone balls flank the northern portico. The head of one of the balls now resides in the Oriental Institute in Chicago. In the beginning of Xerxes's reign, the throne hall was used mainly for receptions for military commanders and representatives of all the subject nations of the empire. Later the throne hall served as an imperial museum. Other palaces and structures There were other palaces built. These included the Takara Palace which was built under Darius I and the imperial treasury which was started by Darius in 510 BC and finished by Xerxes in 480 BC. The Haddish Palace by Xerxes I occupies the highest level of terrace and stands on the living rock. The Council Hall, the Triplian Hall, the palaces of D, G, H, storerooms, stables and quarters. Unfinished gateway and a few miscellaneous structures at Persepolis are located near the southeast corner of the terrace. At the foot of the mountain median man in Persepolis relief, Takara Palace, Apadana Hall, Persian and Median soldiers, part of the Hall of the Hundred Columns with the tomb of King Artaxerxes III in the background. Tombs of Kings It is commonly accepted that Cyrus the Great was buried at Passar Garde. If it is true that the body of Cambyses II was brought home to the Persians, his burying place must be somewhere beside that of his father. 
CTEC as assumes that it was the custom for a king to prepare his own tomb during his lifetime. Hence the kings buried at Nashi Rostam are probably Darius I, Xerxes I, Artaxerxes I and Darius II. Xerxes II, who reigned for a very short time, could scarcely have obtained so splendid a monument, and still less could the usurper Sogdianus. The two completed graves behind Persepolis would then belong to Artaxerxes II and Artaxerxes III. The unfinished tomb, a kilometre away from the city, is perhaps that of Artaxerxes IV, who reigned at the longest two years, or, if not to his, then that of Darius III, who is one of those whose bodies are said to have been brought to the Persians, since Alexander the Great is said to have buried Darius III in Persepolis. Then it is likely the unfinished tomb is his. Another small group of ruins in the same style is found at the village of Hajiabad on the Pulwa, a good hour's walk above Tax Jamshid. These formed a single building, which was still intact 900 years ago, and was used as the mosque of the then-existing city of Istak. Cyrus the Great was buried in Pasargade, which is mentioned by CTEC as as his own city. Since, to judge from the inscriptions, the buildings of Persepolis commenced with Darius I, it was probably under this king, with whom the scepter passed to a new branch of the royal house, that Persepolis became the capital of Persia proper, as the residence of the rulers of the empire. However, a remote place in a difficult alpine region was far from convenient. The country's true capitals were Susa, Babylon and Ecbatana. This accounts for the fact that the Greeks were not acquainted with the city until Alexander the Great took and plundered it. At that time, Alexander burned the palaces, or the palace, universally believed now to be the ruins at Tax Jamshid. From Stoltz's investigations, it appears that at least one of these, the castle built by Xerxes, bears evident traces of having been destroyed by fire. The locality described by Diodorus after Cleotarchus corresponds in important particulars with Tax Jamshid, for example, in being supported by the mountain on the east, 